Before we dive into the episode, I want to ask you something. How would it feel to be able to get up each morning knowing that you call the shots? That you can live and work when, where, how, and with whom you choose? That you get to reap all the benefits of your own talent and expertise and are no longer slaving for someone else's dream, but living your own? You get all this and more with a digital business. And if you'd love to start one but have no idea where to begin, then I have something just for you. I've created a free resource called the Digital Business Quick Start Guide. By downloading this guide, you'll discover my simple digital business launch formula that will help you design your business fundamentals and learn what you need to do next to get your business launched fast. So head on over to nicolohara.com forward slash quick start hyphen guide, or you'll find the link in the show notes to download your guide now and get started on your way to finding the freedom and success only a digital business can give you. Do it now. Don't waste another second of your time that you could be planning your digital business launch. Your future self will thank you. Now go and enjoy the episode. Why is it that some people never actually leave their day job, despite having dreams for something more for years? What can make the difference between staying in something unfulfilling but safe and actually making the move to pursue your passion and find meaning and purpose as your own boss? In this episode, I'm talking about what I think gives people the extra edge to make their entrepreneurial dreams happen and how you can become one of the few who actually does take the leap. Are you ready to get started? Yes? Then let's dive in. I'm Nicola O'Hara, and I made the leap from a successful corporate career as a leader in learning, development and recruitment to launch my dream business and haven't looked back. Every week, we'll bring you step-by-step strategies, essential knowledge and tools, and share inspirational stories and practical tips so you are ready to take your leap to a career and life you love. This is the Powering Your Passion podcast. Hey, and welcome to another episode of Powering Your Passion. I wanted to start today with a poll that was conducted by Gallup the global analytics firm, in 2017. It was a poll about how engaged employees are in terms of their work. Gallup describes engaged employees as those who are involved in, enthusiastic about and committed to their work and workplace. So the poll uncovered that out of the world's 1 billion full-time workers, only 15% of people are engaged at work. That means an astronomical 85% of people are either bored or unhappy in their jobs. But out of those disengaged workers, it's estimated only 5% actually will do what it takes to leave and pursue their passion in another field or to become their own boss by opening their own business or freelancing. A lot of people talk about their plans to escape the rat race, but only a few manage to make a plan and see it through to go against the grain and actually fly free of their gilded cage. So in this episode, I want to look at why some aspiring escapees don't quite make it to the door and what you can do to make sure you are part of that 5% who do make their dreams happen. There are some really obvious reasons why aspiring entrepreneurs who are stuck in corporate jobs don't quite manage to pull free of the, of the employee life. Most of them are to do with responsibilities like children, other dependents, mortgages and other bigger debts. And also fears like the unknown, making the wrong decision and what other people will think and are they good enough? But what about when someone has weighed up the options, understands how they will maintain and support their family while they transition and has decided that they do want to leave and be the CEO of their own business? What happens from the time of that decision to when they were supposed to exit to make them pull back from that new life? From what I've seen, there are other things that hold people back from being able to achieve the new life they want which are less about the nine to five job they're in and more about the business they're working towards. The first of these is that they haven't got their priorities straight. So when you want to leave a full-time job to go and pursue your passion in some way beyond the four walls of the office, you have to shift your priorities. The new passion project you create to ensure you achieve your dream business and life has to come first, beyond anything else in your life, except maybe of course your loved ones. It won't come without sacrifice. 
You have to give up your weekends, cut back on hobbies and your social life. You have to save and cut back on treats and all this while basically working in two jobs. That is why your passion and purpose are so important. It has to be something more than just a desire to escape your job or to make money that's going to fuel you during those times. In order to make it a priority and make your sacrifices worth it, you have to be so excited about what you're working towards, about what you'll be building for yourself and your family, that you're willing to deal with the short-term restrictions. You're doing it to do something you love, something you want more than anything, and that has more meaning for you in life. Something that will fulfill you long term and not just over the next year or so. Your mind and actions need to shift from if the business happens to when it actually will happen. Your language to others needs to be the same. When, not if. You're telling yourself that this is happening. Come what may, this is going to be. If you don't believe that, if you can't see this happening, no one else will believe you. And soon you'll stop believing yourself and the plan will shrink until it disappears altogether. What I've also seen from people who don't make their dream happen is that they're still too all in with their day jobs in terms of mindset. What I mean by that is that they're still programmed in the mindset of being an employee, of giving 110% to their job because that is what they've always strived for. They are just unable to get off that performance cycle, running on the hamster wheel at full pelt. Now, I'm not saying you should give less than 100% to the job that's paying your bills until you escape. But that extra 10% you're used to giving because you want to be seen as a superstar or want to be seen as working hard and you want to be seen as great at your next performance evaluation, you just need to step back from that a bit. You need to get the job done and you need to do it well, but hold back from giving your absolute best, that extra bit of fire that you give, because that energy is needed to go on your new business plans. So when a project comes along that you usually put your hand up for, or additional responsibility is potentially in the offing, look to avoid it. I'm not saying ground to a halt, just take your foot off the pedal slightly, making sure that you do your job, but little beyond that. And look, if for some reason your business plans are halted for reasons beyond your control, you can put your foot back on the gas and go back to your natural performance level. It's really a shift of your priorities away from your job and onto the new project that will be the foundation of the next part of your life. It's another way to prove to yourself it's happening. Another reason people don't ever leave the nine to five despite wanting to is that no matter how good their idea is, how much feedback they have, how much preparation they've done, how much they know this is a viable business, they are still waiting for the right time. Every time they think about making the change, they see something else blocking their way. It could be that it's a bad time in their work. They're just going to get the team past a certain crisis. Or it could be more about global concerns like the economy, the politics of the time, or other life dramas and pressure. I can tell you now, it's never the right time. There will always be many reasons why it's not the right time to leave a secure job, to start a business, to go freelance. It doesn't mean you ignore those circumstances. You need to be very aware of what you're stepping into. You can't be an ostrich. But you prepare for the worst that you expect to have to deal with and then you take the leap when the time is right for you, when you're ready and when you have everything prepared. Look, I waited far too long to make take my leap. I was waiting for the right time, waiting for things to happen in the right way and, and eventually I just had to go and take it because no one's ever going to tell you time is now, time is to go. You don't have that boss above you, that leader above you telling you this is the right time. You have to go with your gut and you have to make sure that you're prepared. But eventually, you just have to go for it. People who don't end up leaving their day job often start by focusing on the wrong thing. They jump straight into planning the minutiae of the business they want and forget about the journey they will need to take to get there. They start thinking about building websites, social media or potential locations for their dream yurt park and wedding venue, forgetting about how they will actually arrange their lives so that it can happen. So really what I'm encouraging you to do is focus on the journey, not so much the destination. Leaving a full-time office job takes thought and planning. You need strategy, you need systems and processes and habits that will help you juggle your job and your passion project. You have to make room in your already busy life to actually work on your new business and bring it into being. When I was looking to leave my job, I found a lot of people out there willing to show me how to start my business, 
give me step by step of how to build it up, how to brand it and how to market it. But what I actually needed was help with how I would just disentangle myself from this corporate life I've been living for so long. How I would manage financially. How would I ensure I was in a good position to leave? And how would I even decide exactly what I would do as a business? And it's not all about the practical. It's about the emotional, the mindset, what it feels like to be going against the grain, to be throwing out the rule book that you've been following so religiously. That was what I was missing. That's why I now talk, teach and mentor about what I do, because becoming a business owner is way more than just setting yourself up in company's house or building a website or designing a logo or choosing the perfect towels for your yoga retreat in Italy. You don't just leave as a nine to five employee and become an entrepreneur overnight. It's a process of deprogramming years of thought patterns and behaviours. And the sooner you start it, the better it will be when you do actually hand in your security pass and leave that office building for the last time. Okay, so the last one is that I've observed is that people shy away from calling themselves entrepreneurs. So they're not really thinking of themselves that new business owner. There's still that employee who just has entrepreneur or business owning dreams. Until you really own that title, it's difficult to actually see yourself as having your own business and then making that final step from resigning it and, and leaving the company. So people seem to think that entrepreneurs mean that they have somebody with a million ideas, a million businesses, really creative, that have lots of things that they can do, that they're a born business creator and owner. owner. When actually an entrepreneur means an individual who creates and or invests in one or more businesses, bearing most of the risks and enjoying most of the rewards. So if you're planning to create your own business where you take the risk and get the reward, you, my friend, are an entrepreneur. The sooner you start identifying as an entrepreneur, the better, because it takes a long time to free yourself from the identity of your job, your role, your corporate life, which has been a central part of who you are for so long. But by starting to call yourself an entrepreneur, even just in your journal to yourself, you'll slowly start to believe it. Entrepreneur, author and motivational speaker Ed Milet says in his book, The Power of One More, that people who go for goals but don't assume the new identity of what they're going for end up regressing back to where they were before, cooling things down to where they're feeling comfortable. In other words, if you don't believe you are what you're aiming for, you slip back to where you started. He gives the example of a friend of his who loses weight year in, year out through a lot of hard work, but ends up putting it all back on because he doesn't have the identity of a fit person, of a healthy person. So starting to have an entrepreneurial mindset before you leave will help you reach the goal. And it is something you have to have once you're in your business or you'll slip back to where it feels safe, the title of employee who is just having a play at a business. And you could end up going back to being an employee because you never quite believed you're actually a business owner and an entrepreneur. An entrepreneurial mindset also helps even when you're working in your day job, as according to Forbes survey, entrepreneurs are the healthiest, most engaged individuals on the planet, finding meaning in their job and being inspired to solve issues. So their mindset and approach towards achieving their objectives is a key factor in their ability to engage in entrepreneurial activity. There are those who seek opportunity in every challenge and seize every opportunity. And that kind of mindset is now more and more being sought after in the corporate and professional working world as seen as an asset in employees. So it's a win-win. The bottom line is, when you plan to leave your 9-to-5 job, at that point you have to stop seeing yourself as an employee. You are an aspiring entrepreneur or freelancer. Your job becomes your side hustle and you are now boss of your own business and work. Just like you put a lot of focus on work into a business as a side hustle, you continue to work hard on your job, but you leave that extra spark, that special source, that special something, that passion for your main focus, which is your new business. Because you must believe it will happen. You will make it happen. Through laying the groundwork, making sure you have chosen the business for you and planning out step by step how you will let go of your employee safety harness and step fully into your boots as an entrepreneur, business owner, you will be in that 5% who make it happen. That's it for this episode. If this is your first time listening in, welcome. I'm really pleased to have you here and hope you'll continue to listen in. And if you've been here for a while, thanks for sticking with me. I hope you are working towards opening your own business and becoming an entrepreneur. 
you miss anything or want to read the key points, take a look at my show notes. The link is in the episode description, which you'll find on wherever you're listening to this podcast. And remember, you deserve to live your passion, so go for it. This is your time. Thank you so much for listening. And if you'd like to listen to more episodes, follow or subscribe to this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon, Google or Stitcher, or go to my website, nicolohara.com forward slash podcast.